What's up everybody? What's up? We head into another wedding uh, today. Surprise, surprise. We got an hour and 20-ish trip heading to Carly Farms up in Oxford above Durham, North Carolina. Got about 150-ish to 160, 70 guests today. A lot of people in their 20s and 30s should be a good party. We got the crew, we got Drake, we got Gabe somewhere. I don't know where he's at, but we're heading out. We got the trailer loaded up. We got uh, pretty cool stuff today. We're doing up lights. We're doing intelligent movers. We got haze, ceremony cocktail, reception, trifecta. The only downside is it's it's hot and we're in a barn with no AC. It's gonna suck for that regards, but let's go on the road. We have arrived and we got goats. I will say, venue, not too bad. Our setup situation, not, it, it, it's terrible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest, it's terrible. <laughs> all right guys, we are all set up on the inside and let me just tell you, what we had to do works surprisingly very well. Like literally works surprisingly very well. It's not the best. I'll tell you what, I'm really confused because for like the literally the last 20 minutes, I can't find my guys. Drake and Gabe, they're just, they're just gone. I'm hoping they're over here. There they are. You guys are just gone. So apparently we're missing the lapel clip. We'll find it. And secondly, can't find a, uh, a mic for some reason. They're not a mic. Can't get a mic to sound right. Here's the ceremony. We have this little alcove down here where it's covered, which is nice. But I'm gonna dial in these mics. So, got it dialed in. Ceremony setup as usual. We have uh, HP laptop over here. We have a Yamaha MG06. We have two Audio Technica 3004 Gen lapels. One is gonna go on our groom. The other one's for the efficient, which is actually already mounted up in the uh, arbitrary or whatever you wanna call that. It's actually dangling there. The little thing I started doing, it makes things a lot easier. Especially when uh, a lot of times when uh, the officiant is a woman, it's a lot harder to get a lapel clipped on them. They don't have normally many spots to hold the actual receiver pack. So uh, what I do is actually dangle it above them. And um, it's to the point where it's hidden. You don't see it anywhere. Don't see it at all. But actually, it is right here. Just dangles right there. Clip the little receiver pack on the side somewhere. Um, good to go. It's out of the way for pictures. And when they're standing right above it, it picks up everything. And it picks up the vowels of the groom and the uh, bride too. So it works out really well. I like to just have double down and have a secondary mic on the groom, depending on, sometimes they sit a little bit further away from the efficient. That's uh, that's how we do it. That lapel is all set up. We are gonna be moving the Maui. The LD Systems Maui 5 Go, we'll move that over here-ish, so it's closer to the audience. Right now, there's a chance of a sprinkle, so we moved it back. But yeah, this is the whole battery-powered rig, the LD Systems Maui 5 Go, that's a battery-powered speaker. We'll be using that for cocktail too with the iPad. And here we have our Colorado Sound and Light, I'm custom built this. It has a DC battery pack in it, which will power the mics in the Yamaha MG06. But we are all set and uh, ready for the ceremony. Reception setup is done inside and uh, damn, dr about to beat someone up. Looks like a bouncer. Celebrate this lapel is up there. Love it. Works really well. Ceremony ended just in time for a uh, rain. Boys right now finishing the uh, tear down. The humidity is through the roof. I'm gonna take you guys back to the reception. We're doing cocktail outside of the barn, which the rain, they might move them inside. I hope to God not, because I love it so much when we get a break between the reception and the ceremony so that we can chill and relax. There's plenty of cover, so they should be fine. I'm gonna take you guys inside and show you the uh, interesting setup that we've done for the audio. We'll go check it out. All right, so welcome to the inside of Carly Farms. Logistics are a little tricky to be able to set up in here. So today we're doing intelligent movers, we're doing up lighting, and we have the full DJ system as well. Well, right now outside we have the LD Systems Mavic 5 Go with our iPad Bluetoothing to it, playing our cocktail music. There's a big ass fan, literally a big ass fan behind, above me, um, that's keeping this nice and semi-cool on the dance floor, which is gonna be good because the cool area to be on the dance floor should be good for dancing. But let me show you guys what I walked into and most people would just set up in the corner, but that's not what's gonna work best here. And also, we have a noise requirement here. We can't go over basically 90 decibels, which we will definitely be going over 90 decibels, and we'll see what they say. Because if you guys know, 90 decibels is like nothing. So if I can get the 95, we should be good. I kind of tailored this system to be able to do that. So let me show you guys uh, what we have to work with and then what we are doing. So obviously the dance floor is in the center of the room, not the best location, but we have tables all the way around. And uh, we have the head table, or the sweetheart's table, the two head tables on either side back here. And they said, uh, you're going over there. Most people go over there, put your two tops on that side and try and do what you can. But you're gonna project over a ton of people to get to this dance floor over here, which was tricky. So I wanted to set up a stack of speakers there and a stack of speakers there, but we have a table right there. And that's actually the grandparents of the, like the bride are gonna be right there. So that's that's a no-no to put a, a loud speaker right in front of grandma. Other option was back in the corner to go back there. But again, we're gonna project over people. The wedding party would be okay. But like I said, we have a noise basically ordinance or compliance that we have to do in this venue. So if I gotta project the speaker super loud to get it loud here, that's not gonna work. So we use some tools come up with this. Also, we got intelligent movers, so 
If I put my movers back there in the corner of my totems, that's gonna look like that's gonna look like crap because it's not gonna be on the dance floor. Up lights, obviously, we put those anywhere. We have them all the way around the room. We'll show you guys that in a second. So starting with the movers and totems, put them back here. So we put them at the back of the dance floor because there's no people here. We got plenty of room as compared to up here to be able to put them. And there's actually power up above, so we ran the power down to the totem. Power our movers on either side of the dance floor. These are ADJ Inno Spot Pros, and they're on top of Global Trust totems. We also have a hazer down here that we will be running later on. I get a lot of questions how I use hazers. I, I use hazers all the time, and what we do is we set a timer. So this is how I set it up. I run the duration on like a quarter, and then I run my interval at half. And uh, we basically turn it on and set it up, and it will automatically do those little intervals to provide haze here and there. And uh, I've had no issues running that. Now again, this is a ADJ haze generator, which uses oil-based haze, not your clouds of smoke that fog produces. It's literally light and airy. Um, and I have no problem using that. I mean, this is a barn, so I don't even know if they have fire alarm systems in here, probably somewhere, but I've used this in country clubs all over the place, and I have no issues with fire alarms in hotels and banquet halls. I have no problems, works every time. A little tangent there on hazers, but I have no problem running that hazer at all my vents. Now, let's get to the tricky situation, which was our sound. How did we do our sound? So, this is gonna be a big crowd today. We have about 150 people, so I wanted to bring a nice system. I wanted to bring my two PRX 15 subs and my 712 tops. Obviously, we can't do a stack over there, so what we did was we did a combo stack. So we have two subs, two 15 inch subs, stacked on top of each other right here basically this is our base and it's right at the corner of the dance floor and it's got plenty of distance to the wall so we're not going to get much comb filtering there and then we put a 712 on top pointed directly at the dance floor so that right there is our base base travels everywhere and that's our directional sound for the dance floor so we get nice loud crisp sound on the dance floor now obviously that one top is not going to have good coverage though for toast and just general dinner music all the way around the room. We added a Bose L1 Pro over here in the corner, which has 180 degree dispersion. And we love this thing. It, it works wonderful and it's got so much volume, but we tucked it in the corner. We ran the XLR cable down, back, around, and over to our rack and ran it on a separate zone on the drive rack. And uh, this right here, if you can see, is gonna cover perfectly 180 degrees that way, all the way covering all the way over to here. So this is gonna be our primary speaker. We'll adjust the volumes throughout the night but this speaker right here is going to do an excellent excellent job of providing nice even sound throughout the whole entire for our toast and for our dinner music is going to be wonderful and just light airy background music when it's time to dance now when it's time to dance we're going to rely mostly on this setup right here this is pointed directly on the dance floor which is where all of our people are going to be that absorb sound so with this setup right here i can crank this bad boy up right here and pound the dance floor as much as i want just from this one little spot and then I could turn this guy down to provide the coverage or the extra volume throughout the whole entire room. This is definitely nowhere near a great setup. Nowhere near, but it works tremendously. Let me play some music and uh, let you guys hear what it sounds like, but it's awesome. Before I do that, let's get back to the, the rack to explain how the back ends of all that works. Obviously, I'm in the corner. Don't like it, but what are you going to do? I'm not on the dance floor, but I'm close enough. So I got my Rain 12, my Pioneer S9 inside of the custom booth that I built. My HP Spectra 15-inch laptop. Gaff taped our cables up and around to there, and uh, that's the XLR cord I told you that's running over to the Bose L1 Pro over there. And then back here, we have our back rack. We have our fan. I, I didn't realize this until I made the video talking about that fan. They make it in black now. So the link I provided is in black, and I'll put it in the description, but these these fans are amazing. They work so well. So back here is our audio rack. We have our Yamaha MG12 with uh, all of the uh, inputs from our left and right coming from the booth, our S9, our mics. We have two uh, wireless handhelds we're using. One for Toast, one for our, or one for me basically. Then when we come down here, we have our Furman power strip. We got 125 volts. That's really good for this location. Dave Show Express, which is running on that laptop over there for all of our lighting. And we have our drive rack. Now our drive rack is being used to the the fullest at this event. What I'm doing is, if you guys watch my drive rack PA2 video, this right here allows me to have three individual outputs that I can control and do whatever I want with. So I ran a high output that PRX 712. I ran a low output to my subs. 
and then I read my mid output to the Bose L1 Pro. So I got all of my lows going through my 215s. I have separate control of that speaker to turn it up or down as I wish, and I have separate control of that speaker over there to turn it up and down as I wish, so I can create the best sound possible for this room. Here's our handheld bikes. Here is our laptop. Uh, so we got the up lights around the room. Here, let me just turn them on real quick. So yeah, we're rocking the uh, both lighting S4 minis. So we got 16 of the S4 minis. I love these lights. They are scattered around the room. And then here in the center, we have the standard S4. So we have eight S4s in the center, and then we have 16 of the S4 minis around the room, providing us some nice lighting this one's tucked right there and uh, then of course we have our movers which we can do here our movers are set up there doing some nice sweet patterns those are gonna look awesome later on tonight especially with the hazer so this is a pretty dope lighting package and like I said it's all about coming up with how you want to run your lighting and your sound to maximize your setup so it looks as professional as possible I was talking to the venue lady before this on a little call I was saying we're bringing a lot of stuff like we need some space and she's like, yeah, she sent me a picture of like where a dude put a giant trussing arch in that corner and you're so far away from the dance floor. So uh, we put the lighting on the dance floor. We have the sound on the dance floor. It looks good. It looks amazing. It's as best as we can do with it. It's not exactly what I want, but it works to the fullest. I will say I'm going to note at this venue, if I come back, I'm going to do the same thing with uh, the L1 Pro, but I'll probably put it over here or over there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my PRX 712s. I'm going to put them up there. I'm going to put both of them up there on speaker stands and point them down. I don't have any speaker stands with me. I just had sub poles. A little mistake. Always bring sub poles and speaker stands because you never know what your setup's going to entail, but uh, we made it work. So if I were about speaker stands, I would have put the 712s up top. Still use an L1 Pro or the Maui. Maui would have worked great to provide coverage around the room, but that's that. Let's play some music. Let's hear what the system sounds like. Now, I have it on a low volume because we're going cocked right outside, but also shout out Ed Sharon. This song's a banger. So literally they're even. So all the bass comes from there. You can hear so great. I can hear perfectly over here. Every corner, beautiful coverage. What do you think, Drake? It's good. It's a little weird having a buzz and a PLX. Yeah, I got but 10 like more it. for the count. Don't worry about what it means. Just 10 more for the count. Uh, <laughs> There's 10 more on the count. On the count. <laughs> 10 more on the count. Did they, what, they just show up? No, no, no. Caters. Well, caterers too. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Starting things off here, we have Sarah's parents, and that is Roger and Patty Yucker. Give it up for uh, Next up on here, we have John's parents, and that is John Sr., Marie Burnett. We're going to move into our wedding party this evening. First up, we have our flower girl, Emily, Jensen Arringer, and our usher, Bentley. Give it up for them. Uh, Man, no. 
This is the end right now. This is the end right now, people. Hey, we finished at 45. Don't worry about the number, but 45, all right? 45 was a count. It got up to 45? Under 45. Impressive. But that was generous. That generous 45? A generous okay. 45. Anyways, guys, it's human in here. Uh, wedding turned out great. Sound system worked out excellent. Not gonna lie, sounded great. Plenty of bass on the dance floor. Speaker sounded great. We got no complaints on that side. The bows worked really well. Like the video, comment down below what you guys thought. Hit the th subscribe button. I can't speak, it's too late. Again, like an hour 20 drive back home, and we're gonna be done for the night. So uh, keep the record spinning, guys. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, Gabe, Drake. Teamwork, peace out. 45. See you on the next one. 45. Peace. <laughs> peace out. <laughs>